Hello, what's good everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Bon dia! Today we're gonna do the reaction of Geography Now Portugal. Eu chamo me Mauro. <laughs> so the Italia. Eu percebo un poco de portugués. But very, very little. Un poco, un poco. <laughs> I would like really to learn this language. I really like it. It's very, very beautiful. I, I don't know that much. I mean, I have been to Madeira. I have never been to mainland in Portugal, but I would really love to go. I like it very much, the accent. I mean, I, I don't know that much. If there's that much of a difference between the European Portuguese and the Brazilian, I think so, the accent is quite different, but I think the Portugal one is the most beautiful. That's just my opinion, come on, so don't, don't kill me over that. I just learned uh, back in the days with this program that is called Pimslearn, and uh, you can ask for a free trial with my link, so if you want to learn a new language, you can do it. I did the Pimsleur course for Portuguese, European Portuguese, and that was really nice, really nice, I really loved it. So anyway guys, let me know what you think uh, about my Portuguese in the comments, I think it's still pretty bad, right? <laughs> Even if it's very similar to Italian, but still, 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 I percebo un poco, un poco. Anyway guys. Like I said, I don't know that much besides football, besides uh, cities. I've only been to Madeira. That island was so beautiful, so beautiful. Wow, the weather was perfect. Never cold, never hot. Oh my God, that's like living in the paradise. Living in the paradise, come on. It was so beautiful. And if any of you don't know about Madeira, I will make a sound that will make you recognize this island. First, look here, look here, 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 look. This one and then... Okay, okay, it's done. It's done the time to be stupid. So let's begin now. Let's watch this video and discover more about Portugal. Some countries try to fight the ocean, others are afraid of the ocean. Portugal practically wants to live in the ocean. If they had gills... Oh, like uh, Azor Island, uh, they're directly in the ocean. Wow, look, I really would love to go there, but I see like the prices of the ticket. That's insane. That's really so expensive over there. I think it's so beautiful. It would definitely be worth it if I had more money. They'd sell their land and build an Atlantis. Welcome to the powerful little sailor of Europe. It's time to learn geography now! Hey everyone, I'm your host Barbs. This episode couldn't have come at a better time because I literally just got back from a trip to Portugal with my mom. This I met tons of you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, and little side note... Hey everybody, this is João. He is a native Portuguese person. He'll be coming in and out of this episode explaining things about Portugal. So, say hi. hi. Wow, that's so beautiful. I think this is the first time that I watched one of their videos and there's actually a native from that country explaining things. I mean, there was of the Philippines, but it was their friends. This one is from the place, from the from Portugal itself, so it's gonna be good. Hi! Anyway, let's look at the globe now, shall we? And one thing before we start, why is that that is so difficult to find, uh, how to say, like uh, movies or... I wouldn't say music because I didn't really search for that, but like even learning material to learn about the Portuguese language. It's, it's like everything is in the Brazilian Portuguese, but I, I don't really like it. I don't really like it that much. I'm sorry to say that, but I really prefer the European Portuguese. So why is that so difficult to find uh, good material to learn? I mean, I can find, but I would like to have much more, much more options. Portugal is sometimes called the door to Europe. It's the start to the mainland. The Portuguese are ocean people. They need to be close to the sea. They get uncomfortable without it. With that in mind, their country is pretty ideal for them location-wise. Portugal, the rectangle-shaped country, is located at the very end of the Iberian Peninsula, surrounded by Spain on all three sides, as well as two island regions in the Atlantic. They have the westernmost yeah, point of continental Europe, Cabo de Roca, and the westernmost point of Europe's domain, the island of Santa Cruz das Flores. Important note, Portugal has one of the oldest 
oldest borders in Europe and one of the oldest in the world, very much thanks to this treaty signed between... Yeah, that's where you go from uh, Christopher Columbus when he discovered first America, right? If I still remember the history classes between these two kings back in 1297. The Spanish and Portuguese have always usually had amicable relations in regards to their states. The only kind of dispute they have is over the town of Olivenza. This is not an official dispute, but most Portuguese mm -hmm. believe that it kind of probably should be theirs because of history or something. Look it up. For what it's worth though, there's even a spot where you can zip line I across this that. river from Portugal into Spain and travel wow. forward one hour in time because for some reason Portugal decided to follow the UTC plus one zone instead of plus to like Spain, meaning that even though oh really wow this really yeah 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 that's true that's true because also in Madeira it was one hour behind it's like in England also like in Canary Islands yeah yeah that's true that's true. Galicia is on but that's really weird that in Spain uh, usually they go like the Greenwich the wind Greenwich Meridian and they change the the time from there that's really weird that. Uh, they didn't pay. The same longitude, they are one hour ahead. Anyway, the country is divided into 18 districts and two autonomous regions, the Azores and Madeira Madera. Islands. These two island regions give a huge boost to Portugal's exclusive economic zone by over 1.7 million square kilometers, making it the third largest EEZ in the EU and the 20th in the world. The capital is Lisbon, and of course it holds the largest airport, Lisbon International, as well as the largest shipping port, the Port of Lisbon. The second largest city is actually Sintra, followed by Vila Nova de Gaia. Sintra. Wow, Villa Nova de Gaia. I didn't even know about those places. I know about Oporto, Braga. I thought those was the, were the biggest cities and most important. Like uh, also there's a Co Coim no not Coimbra. What is it called? Oh my God! There's another city that I can't remember the name right now. That's okay. That's okay. They will probably mention it. However, Porto actually holds the second busiest yeah, airport and Faro in the south. Oh, right? Faro, 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 also Faro, come on. Faro. Comes out for third place for airports as so well. So beautiful, so beautiful. When I, when I traveled to Madeira, I decided to go to Madeira because I was already staying in Canary Islands. That was more, was an easier choice, you know. But Faro, Faro was my destination. That, that looked very, very beautiful, very beautiful. Well, remember, even though these little uninhabited guys known as the Savage Islands are closer to the Canary Islands of Spain, they actually belong to Portugal and make up the southernmost part of Portugal's domain. One of which right here... Ponte wait, wait, Savage Island? That's, is that like... Uh, is that Madeira, right? And there's the other island... Uh Porto Santo. Pina is actually a self-proclaimed micronation purchased by some art teacher dude who bought it and then later claimed wow. independence from Portugal in 2007. Keep in mind, these overseas regions, in addition to the Canary Islands and Cape Verde, are part of a larger oceanic oh, region oh, known as Macaronesia, not to be confused with Micronesia, which is halfway across the world. Yeah, that wow. might be a thing. That. That's a weird I've been countless times to Canary Islands for vacation, but I never heard of that. I didn't know that. One. Look it up. They kind of have all they need in that small space as long as they have the largest portion of the Atlantic coast on the Iberian Peninsula. This is kind of what allowed them to become the front runners in the age of discovery and European expedition years. Most of the first and famous explorers you've probably already heard of, Magellan and Vasco da Gama, they come from Portugal. Ahem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You guys took the Arctic and Vinland like hundreds of years earlier. For what it's worth though, it's important to note that historically, not only were the Portuguese the first to kick off the age of exploration with the first discovery at the Azores and Madeira Islands, but they also had a vast empire at one point expanding across five continents as far as East Timor wow. to Brazil and everything in between. The yeah, problem Brazil was, goes. with the exception of Brazil, Angola, and Mozambique, the Portuguese yeah. really oh, wow. only kind of maintained numerous ports and coastal colonies that didn't encroach far inland with the connecting land masses. Their love of the ocean kind of ended up diminishing much of their land claims, and the majority of the ports were either fought over and lost or sold to other colonial powers of the 18th and 19th centuries. Nonetheless, outside of the sovereign Portuguese-speaking countries today, you will see small remnants of Portuguese influence in places like China's special autonomous region of Macau, oh, Macau with Macau. Portuguese named streets. I talked to some people from Macau, they told me like uh, it's full of Portuguese people. That's really many, many people. I would imagine like uh, they had, uh, you know, the influence of Portugal, so people who still learn Portuguese in school instead is really active, the Portuguese uh, 
many people from Portugal travel there, so that's, that's really interesting, that, I guess. And the churches and culture of areas like Goa, as well as Damam and Diu in India. Anyway, this segment is getting kind of long. Here are some places of interest that you guys, the Portuguese people, suggested we mention in this episode. They have 17 UNESCO heritage sites. Many of them are famous monasteries or churches or sanctuaries. Sintra has that cool national palace wow. thing. And this grotto palace. Guimarães has that castle where Porto oh, kind of started. Awesome. Ericeira is like the best surfing spot. Pretty much the entire city of Porto wow, with so its colorful beautiful. neoclassical and Baroque charm. They also have the coolest bookstore ever and the most beautiful McDonald's. Those Boulder homes wow, in Monsanto. Wow, well, that's a fancy McDonald's. Wow, my God. You could take selfies and say, my God, look where I am. Like I'm in uh, some fancy restaurant and then you will read behind McDonald's. Wow, that will make you look so cool. Oh boy, the castle of Obidos. Evora has like the best historic sites and even oh, a Portuguese Stonehenge. Stonehenge. Coa Valley rock art sites. The world's shortest international bridge with Spain. The cemetery of Anchors. The Monte Penedono Dolmen. Pretty much everything on Madeira. I mean, I don't know, they were not that beautiful. Madeira was so beautiful for so many things, but the beaches were not one of the most beautiful things. I, most beaches were only rocks, you know, that was not that beautiful. But I didn't travel that much in Madeira, so probably that's my fault. But in Porto Santo, I haven't been there, but I see the beaches, wow. That was like, go to the Caribbean islands, that was crazy. I stayed in Funchal, so probably that's why. But oh my god, those flowers, the nature, that was so beautiful. I hope they will talk about it in, in, a, in this segment because it's so beautiful, so beautiful, really. It's so expensive and difficult to reach that island from, from Italy. Or else I would have been there again. I would have traveled there again. It's so beautiful, I'm telling you. Island with its beaches and botanical gardens. Yeah, that, 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 that. come on. Why do you find something that beautiful? Where? I have been there, it's so good. So beautiful, so beautiful, yeah. Museums, this one is even dedicated to- Sue! <laughs> you see that? Do you see that? Come on, come on, do you see that? Come on, he went to Juventus, so how can I not mention? Juventus is my favorite team, so. To Ronaldo. Lisbon has so many sites like the Bellum Tower. And I, and I think some stupid kids, they, they draw the name of Messi in the back of the statue of Ronaldo. I heard that. I don't know if it's a real news or a fake news, but that sounded really crazy. That's what sounded really fucked up. Tower, the Geronimo's Monastery, and every year there is a huge pilgrimage to the town of Fatima, one of the holiest sites in Portugal. Yeah, and that's the thing about Portugal. Like, once someone finds a cool hidden natural spot, it usually gets exposed and invaded fast. And Speaking of nature, that brings us to... Now, as mentioned, Portugal is an ocean-loving country that loves the sea and water. Nonetheless, the actual people do need to kind of live on land and like grow food on it and stuff. So yeah, there's this is how you break it down. Portugal's land makeup, of course, is made up of the two main parts that fall under Portuguese sovereignty, the continental Portuguese landmass on the Iberian Peninsula and the two island regions of the Azores and the Madeira Islands. The continental part of Portugal is located on the Eurasian plate, close to the convergence of the African plate. Geologists speculate that there could be a newly emerging rift which could explain some of the seismic activity such as the great lisbon earthquake of 1755 that nearly destroyed the entire city on all saints day look it up wow. anyway the northern parts are generally more mountainous and hilly with two main mountain chains the northern meseta mountains and the Serra da estrela which has torre the tallest point on the mainland however if we're talking about the tallest point in the entire country that actually belongs to mount pico on azores island back to the mainland though the wow. country is shaped oh my god does does azor island they're like one of my there's there's like a dream destination. It's like a dream destination. Come on, look look where look in the back where they are. Come on, that's crazy. There's nothing in between. That's crazy. It's like midway between uh, Europe and America. That's come on. I think it's gonna be so beautiful over there. Come on. Just to know where you stand, that's so beautiful by three main rivers, the Douro in the north, the longest river of the country, the Tagus or Taj, and the Guadiana in the south, which feeds into the largest lake of the country, Lake Alkeva, which is actually a reservoir created by the Alkeva Dam. The south of the country, known as the southern Meseta, is generally flatter and lush with the Sado Basin fed by the Sado River. Skipping over to the island regions, the Azores and Madeira Islands are volcanic archipelagos, generally lush and green, and mild to warm year-round. Madeira actually has a UNESCO nature zone, the Lorisilva or Loro 
coral forests of the north side. For the I regret so much at that time I didn't travel that much. I didn't see really that much. I stayed most of my, the time in Funchal. I didn't see anything else. I regret that so much. I want to go back there and explore all the island. And also go to Porto Santo. They, they have some amazing beaches if they will show it, I hope. The Azores, they are kind of precariously positioned right at the triple junction of three tectonic plates, and the westernmost yeah, islands, Corvo and Flores, yeah. are actually located in the North American plate. They are beautiful green islands that actually kind of resemble the Irish countryside with farm plots dotted everywhere. This island chain is also the only part of Europe, if you don't consider the Caucasus part of Europe, where tea can be cultivated naturally in its environment. Oh. Phew, that was pretty compact in detail, and we didn't even get to talk about all the cool stuff like the cave beach of Benagil, or this tidal pool, or that place where the largest wave ever was. Wow. Oh, that was Portugal? Yes, it was. Look it up. In the meantime, you know the deal. I take my triple shot of espresso break, which means no one comes. Uma bica. Uma bica. You see, I remember that. That's amazing because Portuguese people drink the same coffee as Italians. Like, as an Italian, I gotta tell you that it's nearly impossible to walk into a bar and expect to drink an, exp an espresso like in the right amount in the cup and taste so good like in Italy. When I went to Portugal that was a beautiful discovery, especially in Madeira, like here you get one espresso that would cost like uh, about one euro, over there like 30 cent, 40 cent and it was as good, if not more good, it was crazy, so cheap and good. It felt like I was still living in Italy. Comes in to fill in for the rest of this segment. Did somebody say Keith? No. I believe he said Noah. For one, they are masters of making anything out of trees, as over a third of the country is forested mostly with oaks, pines, and eucalyptus. Such Portuguese companies, like the Navigator Company, are world-renowned for paper products. And Emorium is the world's largest cork producer, and Portugal being number one in cork production in general. Mm. You will see tons they of stuff from Portugal made of cork. Cork purses, cork shoes, cork notebooks, cork everything. And they wow. love their wine with pork. I can tell you, I can tell you, I drank some good Portuguese wine in Madeira. They know what they do, they know what they do, they know what they do, Portuguese with their wine. Rose, green, and Madeira wines being some of the most yeah, popular. Yeah, Madeira wines. Portugal is home to many animal species as well. Is that going to be a find mammals like wild pigs, wild goats, hares, foxes. The unofficial national animal, though, or at least a common national symbol, uh, would technically be the legendary mythical Barcelos rooster. They're Europe's wow. top seafood consumer per capita, uh, like usually in the top four worldwide. And of course, brings us to the final segment. Food. Some top notable dishes you guys, the Portuguese geography peeps, suggest we mentioned include things like the most iconic national soup, caldo verde. These two sandwiches are probably the most popular ones. Oh, Pasteis oh de nata. So and finally, with seafood, they oh. have everything from pastels de nata, pastel de nata, pastel de nata. Wow. I remember that. Cuttlefish, crabs, shrimp, spiny lobster, barnacles, mackerel, lamp. Damn, I feel so bad that I don't like fish. I gotta get into seafood. I gotta get into seafood. Many, many of these countries, they have so much amazing food that I, I can't enjoy it. Prey, sea bass, clams, oysters, periwinkles, scallops, sardines. Dude, the Portuguese make the best octopus I ever had in my life. Fun fact, the Portuguese actually introduced samosas to India, tempura to Japan, and England probably wouldn't have tea if the Portuguese hadn't traded with China. And of course, mm. the most popular dish of Portugal often seen bacalao. as a national dish, bacalao, which is salted cod, deliberately preserved and soaked before cooking. Interestingly enough, cod isn't even commonly caught off their coast, so they have to resort to importing it usually from the North Sea. Their national dish isn't even really found naturally in their own country. But what does occur naturally in Portugal are the Portuguese people. Let's meet them, shall we? Thank you, Noah. <sighs> Keith again. Art, take care of this. Where, where am I going? Oh! <laughs> You're welcome. Now, I asked João to describe the Portuguese, and here are some things he said. Uh, it's like a resourcefulness of ways. So if you give us like a corkscrew and a frisbee, we'll give you a scooter. Another one is <laughs> tacos as H, when someone is really grumpy or in a real bad mood. To sum it up, that's the ideal Portuguese way. In any case... The country has about 10.5 million people and they are one of the top aging populations in the world and has the highest emigration rate in the EU. The exact numbers are not always completely reliable, but many sources on average report that somewhere around 90 to 95% of the 
population identifies as Portuguese, but that term is very broad as there are many different types of Portuguese people that look totally different. Yeah, from look at those women, they are so beautiful, so beautiful Portuguese women. Wow. Others, some of them are blonde hair and blue eyed and some are tan and olive and brunette. Either way, Portuguese. Like the brunette. remainder of the 5 to 10% of the population comes from all over the world, mostly Europe and former colonial Brazil. states like Brazil, mm -hmm. Angola and Mozambique, and even a small Asian minority as well, mostly Macau Chinese Macau. and oh, India oh. from Goa and Damam and DU. They use the euro as their currency, they use the type C and F plug outlets, and they drive on the right side of the road. Now, of course, in Portugal, the official language is Portuguese, a Latin-based romance language. It's actually related to the Galician language in North Spain and usually the two can pretty much understand each other and weirdly enough Galicians and North Portuguese Even me I can understand pretty much Portuguese people so let's keep this part People have Celtic roots We'll talk more about that in the Spain episode. But anyway, Portugal also technically has a second regionally official language, Mirandese, which is only yeah, spoken yeah. by about 15,000 people in two municipalities of the Northeast region. But otherwise, okay, just being straight up, Portuguese is the most difficult Latin language for me personally. But after spending some time in Portugal, I figured out a shortcut if you want to learn how to speak Portuguese. Here's how you do it. Step one, be Russian. Step two, get drunk. Step three, try to speak Spanish. Meu nome é Paulo, eu gosto de pastiche de Pilau. Calm down, this was a joke. <laughs> Geography now does not endorse underage drinking or alcoholism. And also, do not confuse the Portuguese with the Spanish. They hate that. Actually, when I met João, I had oh, this conversation cool. with him. Hey, João? Yes? When I go to Portugal, would it be okay if I spoke some Spanish just in case if I had a complete communication problem? Yeah, no, don't. Just. But that's okay, that's okay. I mean, if, if, you, if you know some Spanish, come on, they will understand you. Even in Italy, if you come to Italy, you know some Spanish, you don't know any Italian, we can still... I don't know, <laughs> it will be kind of complicated, depending on your, your accent, but I guess we can still understand you, come on, some many words are similar. Just don't, trust me, you're better off just using English. So anyway, the Portuguese, as yeah, mentioned, have a lot of ocean English. history and Catholic roots. About 81% of the country identifying to varying degrees of devotion as Roman Catholic. The Portuguese aren't too quick to note that they did kind of start the Atlantic slave trade, although keep in mind the East African slave trade was actually started centuries prior by Arabs in the Indian Ocean. Moving on, Portuguese culture comes in many Fascinating, vibrant oh forms of tradition and cut. Go Portugal, go Portugal. <laughs> and with that, here's Random Hannah to explain. Portugal today is a very distinct nation, but if you dig close, you can see the layers of influence from groups like Phoenician, the Celtic, Germanic, Visigoth, Vikings, Sephardic, Jewish, and Moorish people. Yeah, even Vikings. And don't you forget it. Of course, as intrepid maritime folk, the Portuguese were the first to invent galleon ships that launched off the Age of Discovery for Europe, post-Viking era. With that, they also created the first forms of Western-style nautical cartography and navigation. It would later be taught and used across the continent. One guy even tried to pioneer one of the first airship designs. Although Portugal may not be well known for their painters or graphic arts, I mean, this dude went crazy and burned every single one of his paintings except one. They definitely have a tradition of three-dimensional expression that dates back centuries. Distinct Portugal styles include things like Manueline architecture of the 16th century, and even today, people like Bordalo II continue the tradition of three-dimensional wow. art. Fun fact, you can probably probably guess a home is Portuguese if the exterior walls have tiles on them, and often blue pattern tiles. They have their own unique Portuguese sport, where you have to knock off a pen with metal discs in varying weights and sizes. Nonetheless, no shocker, soccer or football is the most popular sport with their oldest club dating back to 1893 in Porto. Their national team has consistently ranked high in FIFA standings. We all know Ronaldo is the most mainstream, mm. noteworthy face of Portuguese football. Mm. Ah! Look at him! Look at him! Come on, just saying, just saying, just saying, come on. Look at him. The GOAT! Well, today, I mean, the guy has multiple statues of himself. The yeah, legendary is Eusebio is considered one oh, of the greatest Eusebio. football oh, icons Eusebio. in all time and the symbol of the nation's sport. Festivals, of course, adorn the entire nation from north to south, many rooted in Catholic tradition. June is a huge month where the festival of the three saints take place all over the country, honoring Saint. 
Damn, I should have done this days ago then. Anthony, John, and Peter, where there's a lot of wine and sardines with fireworks. There's also many unique regional festivals Festa like the Festa de Coco, in which they do fun dragon slaying performances. There's the Lazarim Carnival, one of the only places where Celtic rituals can be seen. Anyways, the festivities are usually filled with music, which I guess means we're moving on to Keith's segment. Uh, Alright, starting as early as Gregorian chants in the medieval ages, evolving into the classical era, and eventually winning Eurovision Portugal has had lots of musical accolades. And there's a certain- Really? Which, which, which song won the Eurovision uh, from Portugal? I should react to that maybe. Word that kind of describes the overall feeling of Portuguese-ness when it comes to music. Saude. Saudade. Translates to something like a sense of melancholy and longing as if something were missing. Uh oh my god, I, I, I'm trying to think. I, I really don't know any any Portuguese song from Portugal. Most of the thing we listen in Italy are from Brazil. Like salsa, samba. That's kind, of, that's kind of music, but let me know down in the comments some Portuguese song. I will, I will make a good reaction, especially if you got some Portuguese from Portugal rap. Come on, I'm gonna react right away to that. Uh, this type of mindset is one of the key elements that inspire the most famous of all Portuguese musical genres, Fado. It's even listed Fado. as a UNESCO heritage trait. The most recognizable wow. name with Fado being Amalia Rodriguez. Listen to it and see what you think. Portuguese have their own version of guitars, drums, accordions, even bagpipes. The ukulele from Hawaii was actually introduced from the Portuguese migrants, mostly from the Azores and Madeira Islands where my ancestors are actually from, fun fact. Today the Portuguese music scene has everything from mainstream hip-hop, rock, pop, metal, Moonspell being one of the more popular metal bands. Hey, come on, come on guys, let me know down in the comments. We're gonna make some Portuguese reaction. We're gonna do that, we're gonna do that. This video motivates me a lot to do that. Bands from Portugal. Uh, one time I saw Moonspell, Moonspell at... No, but I don't... I... Don't recommend me stuff like that, like hard rock or metal. I really don't like that. Rock, rap, 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 or some uh, old, old ones, some oldies. I like that kind of music. Or some amazing singer that no matter what genre he do, I gotta listen to it. So you just let me know. You just let me know. At I think it was Ozfest. I don't remember. Moon spells awesome. And thank you, Keith. All right, and with that, we gotta move on to the incredibly condensed history section. Proto-Iberian cultures, Indo-European migrations, Atlantic Bronze Age, Lisbon founded, Phoenicians, Proto-Celts, Rome comes in, Christianity, persecution of Christians, Visigoths, Vandals, Moors, Muslim years, Vikings come in briefly from the north parts, fighting, fighting, blah, 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 they get their first king after independence from Lyon, uninhabited Madeira and Azores islands discovered, Age of Discovery kicks off, Atlantic slave trade, colonies established, Inquisitions, Greater Earthquake of 1755, Napoleon years, First Constitution, Last Monarch Deposed, Republic, World War I joins Allied forces, World War II gets messy, Salazar begins his reign, Colony Wars in Africa, Colonies gain independence, but Timor is still on hold, New Constitution joins EU, World's Fair Expo, releases Macau, releases East Timor, Hipster shops and trendy yet pretentious warehouse district cafes open up, and here we are today! We asked you guys for a list of some of the top notable people from Portugal or of Portuguese descent, and they include people like Prince Henry the Navigator, even though he never really did any exploring himself, Bartolomeu Diaz, Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand no, Magellan, no. these athletes, no. these two popes, no. Diaz, the Vasco da Gama, Ferdinand Magellan, these... Oh my god, I hate so much Mourinho, I'm sorry. I hate that man with all my heart. Mostly because uh, I'm a Juventus fan, but uh, I can't stand him, I can't stand him. Figo, Figo is one of, was one of the best ones. Uh, the other spots I don't follow that much. I don't these know. athletes, these two popes, Nobel Prize winner in medicine, Egas Moniz, the greatest writers, Luis de Camoes, Fernando Pessoa, and Jose Saramago, Daniela Rua, Carmen Miranda, Maria Joao Pires, Sara Sampeo, Paula Rego, and some American and Canadian celebrities that have Portuguese descent include Nelly Furtado, Nelly John Mendes, Nelly. one of my favorite animators, JG Quintel, even Tom Hanks, and uh, this guy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> he's not Portuguese, right? <laughs> yeah, he's no, a celebrity as well. <laughs> born in the Madeira Islands. Keith Everett. Well, as you can see by now, with their bold exploring roots, Portugal has definitely left its mark on the world. And with that, we move on to see how the mark has impacted their relationships to others around the world. In... Friendzone. 
Yeah, Portugal is kind of like the smallest nation that left the biggest legacy. Over 30 times more people than the population of Portugal across the world speak Portuguese than in Portugal. For one, they have the longest official alliance between two countries on Earth with the UK. Forged in 1373, they have been working alongside the British for a long time and have developed numerous bilateral policies and trade deals. Long probably that, that's why probably many, most Portuguese people speak uh, pretty good English, I guess, since they are so much... Uh, in good terms with, uh, with England. I'm not sure about Story that. short, the Portuguese introduced tea to the British and the British helped them get cod. For France, Portugal is kind of like the lean Latin boy next door who keeps trying to flirt with France, even though she's kind of <laughs> dating Germany. There are more Portuguese people living abroad in France than any other nation at about 2 million. The Portuguese wow. love the French. They enjoy the laissez-faire culture and charm and have integrated very well into French society. The Portuguese were the first Europeans to have encountered the Japanese and much of the historical interaction reverberates to the this day culturally. I mean, they founded the port city of Nagasaki, and even the word arigato is derived from the Portuguese word obrigado. Oh even my god! Japan was... I never thought about that. I never thought about that. Yeah, arigato, obrigado. Wow, that's such an interesting fact. Isolated, they traded for centuries, only with the Portuguese. Even though things got messy in the 60s and 70s, they still have close ties to their former colonies, especially Brazil, Angola, and to some extent Mozambique. Many of these people have recently moved in on separate migration waves, and today you can see many of them in major cities like Lisbon and Porto. Billions of dollars are traded with Angola annually, and Portugal even cancelled Mozambique's remaining debts from independence to 2005 at nearly $400 million. Brazil is their biggest legacy. It's like the sun they fed steroids and became a massive giant bodybuilder. Today, the Brazilian dialect of Portuguese is more widely taught and distributed in media than actually. Yeah, why is that? Why is that? Pro I mean, I can guess it's because Brazil is like 10 times bigger than Portugal. That's the only explanation that makes sense, right? Well, Portuguese, Portuguese, and even after independence, the two have shared a privileged family bond that will always have high favor towards the other. For what it's worth though, when it comes to their best friend, most Portuguese might begrudgingly hate to admit it, but they kind of, at the end of the day, will always walk side by side Spain. with their oldest friend, Spain. Portugal was actually the first nation that fully emerged out of the Iberian Peninsula back when Spain was a bunch of disjointed kingdoms. Since then, they've been rivals and adversaries. During colonial years, they competed to see who could take over the Americas better. They've had centuries of conflict and treaties, alliances, unions, uh, arguments, but in about. the end, they just have that Iberian culture and Latin root that ties them in so closely as brothers. In conclusion, <laughs> We say that we like to keep things moderate and simple, but our history is anything but moderate and simple. Our love of water kind of spilled over into a global empire phenomenon that even us probably didn't see coming. Today, the Portuguese legacy lives on. Stay tuned, Qatar is coming up next. Wow, this was really interesting. Oh my God. I want to do all, all. Come on, is that even possible? Do them all. You're going to keep gotta keep on recommending this stuff because probably I'm gonna miss many but I'm trying to do I would try to do at least one one every day I mean I can't always do it but because they're pretty long but oh my god that's so beautiful so beautiful I wish especially in these times you know with everything that is going on in the world that is not that easy to travel and you see this kind of beautiful things learn about new cultures that's it's really something amazing. That's really something amazing. Something I really enjoy. But anyway, guys, this was it. I hope you enjoyed this reaction. Let me know down in the comments. Subscribe for more reactions. As I said before, I want to learn more about uh, Portuguese music. Anyway, that's it, guys. Obrigado. Adeus.